Chapter 10, The Buccaneers, their most famous commander, Sir Henry Morgan. During the 17th century, the West Indies became the headquarters of bands of pirates and sea rovers, often called buccaneers. In the early days of that century, a band of English and French adventurers settled on the island of Tortuga, off the north coast of Hispaniola. From their little island, they made raids on Hispaniola, where large numbers of wild cattle and pigs wandered over the plains from which the Spaniards had driven the natives. These adventurers had learned from the Arawaks how to preserve meat by cutting it into pieces and smoking or drying it on a framework of green wood over a slow fire. The Arawak name for the framework was Bukan, and from this came the name Buccaneer. The buccaneers sold the preserved meat to smugglers on passing ships who were not allowed to trade with the Spanish colonists. They also sold the hides of the cattle to the smugglers. The Spaniards tried to rid themselves of the adventurers by killing off the wild cattle and pigs. Then in 1635, they attacked Tortuga and slew every buccaneer they could find. But soon the buccaneers, under a leader named Willis, returned and vowed eternal enmity to the Spaniards. Then the buccaneers took to the sea and for many years were a terror to Spanish ships and to Spanish settlements on neighboring islands. After a time, the French in their turn drove the buccaneers out of Tortuga. Some of them under Willis then settled on the coast of Central America in the district now known as British Honduras where the name of the town of Belize is said to be a way of saying Willith. Towards the end of the 17th century, many of these adventurers had become mere cutthroat pirates without the qualities of bravery and daring that marked some of the earlier buccaneers. But in the middle of the century, the governors of Jamaica were often glad of buccaneering allies. A little later in Hispaniola, the French were often helped by them. One of the most famous of these adventurers was Henry Morgan, the son of a Welsh farmer. His uncle, Colonel Edward Morgan, was Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. As a lad, Henry went to sea and probably came to the West Indies with Penn and Venables. He spent some years as a soldier in Jamaica, and then he joined the Buccaneers, and later he became their Admiral. When in 1668, the governor of Jamaica heard that the Spaniards were planning to attack the island, he sent Morgan to find out whether this was true. With 10 ships and 500 men, Morgan sailed to the south coast of Cuba. He found Havana too strong for him to attack, but marched his men inland and attacked the city of Puerto Principe, now Camagüey, which he looted carrying off 500 oxen paid by the inhabitants as ransom. He returned to his ships and sent a message to Jamaica to say he had learned of the Spaniards' plans. Morgan then told his captains what he meant to do next, and his plan was so daring that some of them sailed away and refused to have anything to do with it. It was no less than an attack on Portobello, one of the strongest Spanish fortresses on the Panama coast. Morgan was not to be turned back. He sailed to the mainland and leaving his ships some distance down the coast, he took 23 canoe loads of men to make a landing. They met an escaped prisoner who acted as guide, overpowered the sentry before he could raise an alarm and seized the first of the three forts that guarded the town. The second fort was more difficult and was only taken after scaling ladders had been made and after the governor who was defending it had been killed. Then the third fort fell and the town was captured. While the men were looting the town, the governor of Panama arrived with 3000 men. The buccaneers beat them off and besides the loot obtained in the city, forced the inhabitants to pay 100,000 pieces of eight as ransom. A piece of eight, a Spanish coin, was equal to about four sterling in English money. 
When the governor of Panama found that Morgan had only 400 men and no cannon, he sent to ask him for a specimen of the wonderful weapons he had used. Morgan sent back a pistol and a few bullets with the message that if the governor of Panama would keep them for 12 months, he would come himself to Panama to fetch them away. The governor at once returned the pistol together with a valuable gold ring as a present and begged Captain Morgan not to trouble to come again. This took place in 1668. The news of Morgan's exploit caused much alarm in Europe and England and Spain at once signed a treaty declaring that there was friendship between their subjects in America. Before the news of this treaty could be carried across the Atlantic, Morgan had attacked and taken the strong city of Maracaibo in Venezuela. After looting the town, the buccaneers returned to find that the Spaniards had repaired the fort and mounted guns to prevent their escape. The Spanish admiral with three ships was also waiting for them. Morgan turned a small vessel into a fire ship and sent it alongside the admiral's flagship, which was soon sunk. Another Spanish vessel ran ashore and was set on fire by its own crew while the third was captured. Morgan then pretended to land his men as if to make an attack on the fort by land, thus causing the gunners in the fort to swing their guns landward. As soon as this was done, Morgan's sailors crowded on sail and dashed past the fort and out of range before the guns could be turned back again. From this raid, Morgan secured 20,000 pieces of eight and 500 head of cattle as ransom. He also recovered 15,000 pieces of eight from the ship sunk during the fight. On his return to Jamaica, Morgan was taken to task by the governor for doing more than he should have done. But the Spaniards were then ravaging the Jamaican coast and the council hurriedly appointed Morgan commander in chief of all the ships of war of Jamaica. The next year, 1671, he attacked the city of Panama and burned it to the ground. When another treaty was signed by England and Spain, the British government had to stop Morgan's raids. He was sent to England and made a prisoner in the Tower of London, but he was soon released, knighted by Charles II and sent back to Jamaica as Lieutenant Governor. He then did his best to put an end to the buccaneering in which he had taken such an active part. The British government took steps to hasten the matter by providing the Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica with a small number of fast sailing frigates. These patrolled the south coast of Hispaniola and Cuba and elsewhere to keep a lookout for rovers. In 1687, Sir Robert Holmes arrived with a powerful squadron of ships and proceeded to clear the American seas. Henry Morgan died in 1688. The French also took steps to clear Tortuga and other buccaneering refuges in Hispaniola, for they had made themselves masters of the western part of the island and called their colony Saint-Domingue. Many of the buccaneers moved away to other parts of the ocean, especially to the South Seas, and preyed on East Indian shipping off Madagascar. Others joined the logwood cutters and set up small settlements at the mouths of the rivers of Central America. These bay men, as they were called, had many fights with the Spaniards who attacked their camps. But the Spaniards, after a defeat in 1798, left the bay men alone. And in 1862, their settlements became the British colony of Honduras. So the great days of the buccaneers came to an end though pirates of a lower order, many of them scoundrels, continue to lurk in the caves of the Bahamas for another half a century, as we shall read in the next chapter.